I'm pissed off, man. Look, I know I normally talk about video games, but I, I promise to try and make this interesting. I, I, look, I, I gotta talk about this. <clears throat> this is a one wheel. Specifically, this is a one wheel pint. It's an electric vehicle in the same vein as, say, an electric skateboard or scooter, and the company that makes it is called Future Motion. And Future Motion, despite making some great products, like, I, I love this thing, is doing some truly awful things. It used to only be minorly awful things that the community could circumnavigate, but everything changed when the Fire Nation, I mean when they released the One Wheel GT. It's a great product, a great upgrade from their previous flagship model, the XR. Except, of course, for the myriad of anti-consumer practices and QA problems that have made everyone a little bit pissed off. Never before have I seen a community turn so vehemently on the company that makes the products that they like. So let's have a little chat about why. Look, for what it's worth, the GT sounds like a good board. It's got a lot more power, it's designed as a lot more refined than the XR, which almost feels homemade, and the people who have it who don't have any issues with it genuinely seem to enjoy it. There are three problems, however. First, and most obviously, is the DOA issues. There have been many, many reports of boards that have just been dead on arrival, much more than you'd expect for the quantities that they've been shipping. I mean, I guess it's fine though, because if your board is DOA, you can ship it back to them and they'll fix it free of charge, so, you know, that's nice, I guess. The second issue is a little bit more difficult to pinpoint, and that's ghosting. Now, ghosting is when you step off the board and the sensors that detect that you're riding it don't disengage, and so it just flings itself off into the distance. Now, this is not only dangerous, having a, you know, 15 kilogram hunk of metal being flung in random directions at 35 kilometers an hour, but, it's also going to be difficult to diagnose and fix because it's an intermittent issue and anyone who's worked in repair knows that intermittent issues are the fucking worst. Now, ghosting might have a simple fix, like, I don't know, but it's probably going to be a lot more difficult to find that fix than it is for the DOAs given it's been stated that all the DOA boards might need is just a firmware update. These two issues aren't great, yes, but they're not insanely bad problems. I I'm not saying that we shouldn't expect better, but more that what comes next is a thousand times worse, at least in my eyes. Which I guess brings us to the BMS trap. What the fuck is a BMS? I'm glad you asked. Basically, the BMS, or battery management system, sits in between the battery and the, de and the device. And it's used to monitor the battery's health, check if it's not being over or undercharged, and also to monitor the individual cells' voltages and temperatures. Because, you see, <coughs> Larger batteries, like those found in the one wheel, or in like electric bikes, or even ele like electric cars, are not just one buck off big battery. It looks like that to the user, but in reality, it's actually a bunch of smaller cells that have been joined together for better performance. And it's kind of similar to how you might put a couple double E's into your remote. Now, each of these batteries needs to be kept at exactly the same voltage. Not exactly, but pretty much exactly the same voltage. And that's called balancing, that's the main job of a BMS. Because if cells are even like a fifth of a volt out from each other, that can reduce performance and it might even be a little bit dangerous. And it's, it's a very important part of any device with a large voltage battery. And a device that's designed with something like this in mind will not function without a BMS. So say, you're like me, and you want to do a battery replacement because you're not quite getting the range you're used to. And you can just do a drop-in battery replacement that will not only get you back to new, but also add about 50% more battery on top of that. Now say that the newest board did something really stupid and say stored the firmware of the BMS. Just pretend this, this is the BMS, it's not what a BMS looks like, but just pretend. Say it stored the firmware of the BMS in, in volatile memory rather than, I don't know, literally any other kind of non-volatile memory. So, when you unplug it, the firmware is wiped, because volatile memory wipes itself when it doesn't have power. Congratulations, you've just learned exactly what the GT does. Now we don't know if that's exactly what's happening, but what we do know is that if you unplug the battery, you get a corrupted memory error. So, however it's happening, if you unplug the battery, the whole thing becomes a $2,200 doorstop. Okay, I know you're not watching because you're a company and I have a small following, but future motion? What the fuck? There is no reason to do that other than to make sure that you are the only ones who can replace batteries. No other reason. 
This has been their response to people rightfully calling them out on their shit. The long and short of it is, is that they think it's fundamentally unsafe for people to change their batteries because the device is too complex for us simpletons to understand. Bullshit. There is nothing inherently unapproachable about the electrical engineering of these devices, especially to those well versed in electrical engineering like independent repair shops. Like fuck, even I somewhat understand what's happening in there and I'm dumb as hell. I wouldn't trust myself to, you know, make a new battery, but I know enough to trust that the third party batteries that were available for the older models, like this guy, are like of the same quality or even of a higher quality than the ones produced by Future Motion. And they haven't just locked replacements to specifically just their own batteries. Well, they have, but that's a separate issue. They've locked the replacement of batteries at all to anyone but themselves. And we know this because they've blatantly stated it. Quote, if your board needs a replacement pack, we provide that service at our repair facility using brand new OEM cells and parts. This is not a profit center for us, but a way to keep you riding and stoked on your board for years to come. Now, I believe that it's not a profit center for them. R repairs are expensive. I used to work in a repair shop, I know, shit ain't cheap. But intentionally or not, it's most certainly a method of control and it makes repairs for the international market, a smaller but not insignificant part of their consumer base, literally impossible. Future Motion is a very American company for both good and ill. They like to tout uh, that they are designed and manufactured in Santa Cruz, California, which is genuinely a good thing, you know, not shipping off manufacturing overseas to cut costs at the expense of, you know, a bunch of emissions and human rights violations. But, they seem to have failed to realize, despite doing international shipping themselves, is that the international shipping of a product with a fuck off big lithium battery in it that weighs anywhere between 11 and 15 kilograms is really, really fucking expensive. A fact that I know firsthand because I had to ship this thing into the country myself because Future Motion just doesn't ship here. So, to import this thing into New Zealand in New Zealand dollars as of about January 2020 was $770.69. Nice. And that's, if say if there was anything wrong with the, with the battery of a GT and I needed to replace it, that's about how much I'd be looking for for a battery replacement. And actually double that because it will be shipping, shipping both ways. And then also throw on the cost of the battery itself, which is probably another $700. Any issues that we have down here that we can't fix ourselves are a complete write-off. Even if the BMS trap was done with the best of intentions, and I don't believe it was, that still wouldn't matter. And even if you claim that that's, that's what I should expect because I live in New Zealand and New Zealand's on a market for future motion, go ask about the shipping, cross, the, the shipping costs for our friends in Australia across the pond, which future motion do ship to, because I doubt they'll be much different. We've had a wave of sustainability and right to repair in the past few years. You have the framework laptop, the Fairphone, you I mean, fuck, even Apple's been forced to start selling some of their internal components so that people can do independent repairs. And luckily, we have Lewis Rossman on the case, who is, you know, basically the face of right to repair, no matter how much he doesn't want to be, calling Future Motion out on their shit. So hopefully something will actually happen. But in the meantime, fuck you, Future Motion. Get your head out of your ass. I am used to being ignored by companies because I don't live in the States, but I'm at the end of my fucking wit here. I was excited for the GT, I, I genuinely was. It looked like a solid upgrade from the XR and I was, I was looking to upgrade my pint at some point, but I can't support this, no matter how much better it is. I'm fucking sick of it. I don't care how many lawsuits you're in, which mostly look like errors and pushback and lack of communication on safety issues, not errors in third party modifications anyway. I don't care. You are swimming against the current here, and eventually your body's gonna give out. So just let us repair our own fucking devices before we have to force you to allow it.